Thanks. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. Thanks again, Aaron, for that intro. Uh, as she said, uh, my name is Tyler Cowdery. Uh, today I'll be presenting my thesis project, Mapping Bulk Kelp Forests in Puget Sound with a Consumer Level UAV. Uh, this project was a collaboration with the Washington State Department of Natural Resources, uh, so I wanted to uh, give them credit here. So uh, to start things off, a little background on bull kelp. Uh, bull kelp is a species of brown algae endemic to the Northeast Pacific region, ranging from the Aleutian Islands to Southern California. The term kelp refers to seaweeds of the order uh, Laminarialis. Despite their appearance, kelps are technically not plants, but rather members of a group of protists called heteroconts. Uh, this means that they are more closely related to single cell diatoms than they are to uh, seagrasses or trees, for example. A select number of species of kelp form large floating canopies, commonly referred to as kelp forests. Um, in the case of bull kelp, these actually die off and regrow every single year uh, and therefore have one of the highest primary productivity rates of any organism on Earth. Um, in Puget Sound, bull kelp is considered a foundational species because it provides critical habitat to a variety of marine life. Uh, is a major constituent of nearshore food webs and fulfills a variety of other critical ecosystem functions. Uh, bull kelp forests are found throughout Puget Sound and the Washington coast, as you can see uh, in the map on the left there. Uh, despite this large geographic range, bull kelp forests are very ephemeral and sensitive to changes in environmental conditions, such as water temperature, pH, and salinity. Uh, which has led to concern that they may be at risk due to the impacts of climate change. Compounding on this concern, uh, research by DNR has shown that kelp forests in South and Central Puget Sound have experienced significant declines from their historic distributions. In South Puget Sound in particular, it is estimated that as much as 80% of bull kelp extent has been lost since uh, colonization in the mid 19th century. Uh, therefore, in order to inform better management and conservation of these critical habitats, uh, additional long-term monitoring is necessary to discern trends and identify populations that are at risk of potential collapse. This need was outlined as one of the main strategic goals in the 2020 Puget Sound Kelp Conservation and Recovery Plan, uh, a major collaborative effort co-authored by organizations including uh, DNR and NOAA. Uh, currently, there are many monitoring projects being conducted around Puget Sound, albeit uh, in a patchwork fashion. These include aerial monitoring of the Strait and Outer Coast by DNR, uh, aerial and boat-based monitoring of the San Juan Islands by the Samish Indian Nation, and kayak-based surveys of select sites by volunteers with the Northwest Straits Commission, uh, as well as DNR scientists. Once he's done, um, I will be free. Okay. Oh, thanks, Alexis. <laughs> um, there is also a growing body of research investigating the use of uh, various satellite platforms to map the extent of kelp forests in places like California and South, uh, South America. Uh, each of these methods offer a mix of benefits and drawbacks and have a role to play in creating the rich mosaic of data necessary to monitor bull kelp forests across all Puget Sound. Uh, however, for the specific purpose of filling spatial and temporal gaps that currently exist in the data, UAVs offer a balance of these considerations that make them particularly suitable uh, to the task. Uh, to name just a few, uh, UAVs are low cost relative to plane and high resolution satellite platforms. They can be deployed in a variety of environments by land or boat and can efficiently collect very high resolution data at the individual site level to complement boat-based monitoring. So uh, this brings me to my primary research question, uh, which was, can consumer level UAVs be used to reliably generate geospatially accurate maps of floating bull kelp forests in Puget Sound? To answer this question, a series of surveys were flown at five known kelp forest sites throughout Puget Sound. These sites ranged from about 14 to 60 hectares and represented a diverse set of bull kelp forests with different distributional characteristics and geographic locations. Uh, the drone selected for these surveys was a DJI Mavic 2 Pro, which captures high resolution imagery in the visible spectrum. Uh, this drone was chosen due to its low cost and accessibility 
uh, to being flown by pilots with varying levels of experience. When planning surveys, a series of target conditions were selected based on previous research of kelp forests and uh, remote sensing in nearshore environments. These include surveying during negative low tides to maximize the presence of kelp canopy, uh, moderate sun angles to minimize reflection or glare on the surface of the water, and favorable weather conditions. Uh, additional elements of this study's design included the collecting of high accuracy ground control panels, uh, which were used to georeference the imagery during processing, uh, as well as the coordinating of drone surveys to occur on or very near dates where kayak-based surveys of the same kelp beds were conducted in order to provide another source of ground truthing. So uh, once the surveys were complete, imagery was imported into uh, the software Agisoft Metashape. Uh, this is two views of that here uh, to conduct what is known as photogrammetry. Uh, photogrammetry is where geolocated two-dimensional photos can be combined to form a three-dimensional scene. Uh, from these 3D scenes, a variety of products can then be generated, including uh, digital elevation models, dense point clouds, and large image products uh, known as orthomosaics. Uh, these photogrammetry projects could be rather large and required significant time, computing power, and technical knowledge of the software to process. Uh, but when successful, the end result was continuous and geospatially accurate imagery of each site that could be used for further analysis. Uh, so to give you an example, uh, I'll quickly show you a few of these orthomosaics um, from some of the surveys I conducted. So this is at North Beach County Park in uh, North Puget Sound. This is Vashon Island in Central Puget Sound. And these callouts are just to show you some more detail uh, of the canopy. And this is uh, Lincoln Park, uh, also in Central Puget Sound. Um, the successful generation of these image products marked a significant milestone in the course of this project uh, and was considered um, a major result in and of itself, given the uncertainty whether uh, low cost UAVs are, uh, would be capable of producing high quality orthomosaics. So from here, uh, the project turned to uh, what kind of usable data could be extracted from each survey. Uh, once the orthomosaics for each survey were generated, there were many possible ways to analyze the results uh, to get usable metrics about the kelp forest canopy at each site. The first method that was chosen for this project was uh, called an object-based random forest classifier. Uh, which is a machine learning algorithm that categorizes imagery into different classes uh, based on user-defined training data. For this project, uh, imagery was classified into either uh, floating kelp canopy or uh, water slash other. And at the bottom here, you can kind of see what that looks like uh, going from the raw imagery to a classified output. Uh, so in order to assess how effective the random forest classifier was at this task, uh, a stratified random assessment point approach was taken. Uh, this method generates points randomly within each class, and then the points are manually verified against the original imagery to determine whether the classifier was correct. Uh, once this was, was completed for all points, the uh, analysis generated what is known as an error matrix, which you can see in the bottom right. Uh, and this gives multiple dimensions of accuracy of the classified result. Uh, these include users and producers accuracy for each class, which correspond to type one and type two errors respectively. Uh, overall accuracy, which is the percentage of all points that were correctly classified. And uh, Cohen's kappa, which is an index from zero to one of the accuracy of the result as compared to a randomly generated counterexample. Uh, so initial accuracy assessments at each site uh, showed mixed results with only three out of nine uh, of the classified rasters meeting the uh, 0.6 or above threshold to be considered to have substantial accuracy. Um, however, it was discovered that the accuracy of the random forest classifier was superior 
in the region of the subtidal zone where the underlying seafloor visibility dropped off. Uh, by masking off the shallowest 5 to 40 meters of each survey area, kappa values of 0.6 or higher were achieved for every survey. Um, and on top of this, uh, in six out of nine surveys, values of 0.8 or above were achieved, which is considered uh, excellent accuracy. Uh, so this finding shows that the random forest classifier is indeed uh, a valid tool to classify the distribution of uh, floating kelp canopy, um, but with uh, consideration given to the implications of masking out the shallowest extent of each site. Um, so one of the primary motivations for generating high accuracy classifications at each site um, is that it enables the calculation of total canopy area and percent canopy cover within uh, the overall footprint of the kelp forest. Uh, both of these are important indicators of abundance. Um, in this example pictured here at North Beach, it was found that the surveys uh, that met target conditions uh, that I outlined earlier um, on uh, August 16th and August 30th uh, generated nearly identical values for canopy area despite um, major differences in water quality. Uh, so you can see those two in the top right. Um, the survey on September 30th uh, that was captured with a low tide that was two feet higher than the other two by contrast resulted in a canopy area estimate that was only half the other two. Uh, this extreme level of agreement between repeat surveys at each site would not be expected in every case, um, but this example does strongly show the importance of consistent survey conditions uh, in order to assess long-term trends. Uh, and then calculating these same metrics at all five sites, uh, we see that there is a fair amount of variability. Uh, furthermore, there appears to be no correlation between canopy area and percent cover uh, from site to site. While this was not unexpected, uh, the result is significant in that it suggests that no single measure is sufficient to track changes in the distribution and abundance of bulk kelp and Puget Sound. Uh, rather, metrics such as overall bed extent and percent cover must complement each other in order to give a more complete picture of the kelp present at each site. And uh, the final analysis performed on the ortho mosaics was a comparison to kayak based bed perimeter observations. Um, to mirror that method, uh, perimeter for each kelp bed was delineated by hand on the imagery uh, with a 20 meter grid overlaid. Uh, this matched the requirement used by DNR when performing kayak surveys for including individuals uh, at the fringe within the bed perimeter. Uh, while these two methods are not strictly comparable, it was found that the estimates generally agreed from uh, one site to another. Uh, large patches that were missed by kayak surveyors or that were included in the kayak survey but found to be too low density for inclusion in the imagery uh, appeared to be the source of most of the variation between these two methods. Uh, so this result suggests that further work is needed to assess the correlation between the two methods uh, and to determine whether hand delineation of the imagery would be a suitable stand-in for kayak-based surveys where they are lacking. Uh, so uh, overall, this project successfully demonstrated that low-cost UAVs are capable of generating accurate and meaningful imagery products that can be used to characterize the bulk health forests found in Puget Sound. Um, furthermore, UAV mapping offers a potential way to fill gaps in our knowledge of the distribution and abundance of bulk kelp that other methods currently do not capture, uh, and therefore is a compelling option to complement those methods. Uh, and uh, research into this field is ongoing at DNR in order to refine the role that UAV mapping will play uh, in long-term monitoring of bulk kelp forests throughout Puget Sound. Okay, uh, so with that, I wanna thank uh, everyone for uh, attending my talk today. Um, again, I wanna thank my collaborators at DNR. And finally, a uh, big thanks to uh, my reader, Erin, for her support and for helping me to finally wrap this project up. So thank you, and I'll take any questions. <laughs>